the summer, one of the projects we worked on was four different Muha's pieces, an urticaria rash, impetigo wound, grease burn, and some abscesses. The projects that I was in charge of included the urticaria and the impetigo rash and the grease burn. Uh, to do these, we would sculpt the positive out of clay first, and then we would pour a negative mold using fast-setting silicone. Once we pulled that negative up, we could apply some pigmented silicone into the depressions in the mold and then wait for that to set for about an hour and then apply a clear top coat. Two of the rashes actually used the same mold and just achieved different effects using different pigments. The grease burn uses two different layers. One of them is a pink pigmented layer and then a clear top coat. The impetigo rash actually uses three different layers. One of them is a yellow uh, infected looking layer and then blood on top of that and then a clear coat on top of that. So it ends up being three layers and it takes six hours to make because one hour is needed between each color and then the entire thing needs to cure for four hours and then they can be peeled out. Molly Tillis and I were in charge of creating the molds for the abscesses. We started out making the mold using the 3D printer and we would pour the silicone into the four little depressions in the mold and then we would place a little mushroom piece right in the back so that there was a hole that we would pour silicone into. Then once they would dry, the second part was to pour our pus solution into it, which was a bit of a challenge to make, but we ended up using a oil-based lotion with beeswax, and then we would seal the back with dragon skin, and then it would harden. That made it very durable, so that it wouldn't pop before you cut into it, and you could flip it upside down. You had to finish the project, and it would look, it would be a little rounded abscess that could sit for months and months and then be used uh, in a simulation later on. The Zemtex used the moulage pieces in a simulation or a workshop. During a workshop, they would place the moulage piece on a task trainer, or during a simulation, they would place it on a mannequin or an SP. The rashes and burns direct the trainee toward the correct diagnosis and then towards which action they should take. It's really important that we make the rashes and burns as realistic as possible so that the learner isn't noticing, oh, that's not the right skin color, that must be the problem, because in real life it's not going to be that easy to find and they're going to have to search around for it a bit. The abscesses show the learner how to drain them. They first have to cut into them, drain them, and then pack them with gauze. We want to give a really realistic look without having to worry about damaging the expensive mannequins or other equipment. So that's why our pus solution is made with all natural materials, um, no harsh dyes or anything that would damage the equipment.